This is an end times, last days channel. The end times started 2,000 years ago when Lord Jesus Christ uh, came to earth. Um, now is the tail end of the last days. Um, now, uh, the teachers on this channel, this is Neville Johnson speaking, and he's had many thousands of encounters with the Lord Jesus, physical encounters with the Lord, and thousands of different things with him, for him. Been on missions with angels, you know, all over the world. You know, the Queen Elizabeth's castle, down into the pits of hell to reclaim, to retrieve uh, King Solomon's crown of wisdom and take it back to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ told him that he's going to distribute that crown of wisdom across the earth here in the last days. Um, Neville Johnson's been into the future. He's uh, seen the millennial reign, parts, pieces of the millennial reign of Christ. He's been into the most high, the presence of the most high God and in, in the high courts. He's been into the outer courts, the inner courts, the paradise in heaven. He's in lots of different parts of heaven and different heavens themselves. And he teaches, and other teachers on this channel uh, teach about the Antichrist, the New World Order, the One World Government, the One World Religion, One World Church, the False Prophet, the World Bank, Cashless Society, the Mark of the Beast, One uh, World War Three, the Tribulation, the Rapture. One World Court, the Two Witnesses, the One World Economy, the the Economic Collapse, and the One World Military Force. All the teachers on this channel, it, it, subscribe to the channel and get caught up and get up to date. We are the remnant. We are the chosen ones that sit in high places with the Lord Jesus Christ. Right at this moment, with our spirits connected to his, we are um, selected and elected by God. And it's up to us to... To learn and become strong powers for ourselves, our families, and our churches and our communities, so that we that we will not be making decisions out of fear, but out of uh, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God. So keep learning, subscribe to the channel, and keep learning. Listen to something every single day. Thank you. 
church at that time, which basically taught what's the baptism of the Holy Spirit can really be received just by faith. No preparation is needed. You just have to have faith to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, there is some truth in this, but it's not the whole truth. It's only part of the truth. Now, we've noticed, we know that many in the holiness movements of the 19th century experienced an experience which they call sanctification. It was a real experience, a life-changing experience that transformed them. They did not receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, but they, ex they experienced something which was very, very powerful. It had a transforming effect upon their lives. And they call this experience sanctification. Now, to experience this experience, this ex sanctification or, or this experience of sanctification, much preparation was needed. They spent time searching their lives before God. They spent much time allowing the Holy Spirit to search their lives. And they would constantly place themselves, as it were, on the altar of God, spiritually speaking, as an act of absolute surrender to the Lord. And um, through this process, God really dealt with them, dealt with their heart and dealt with the, the problems of purity in their lives. And, but primarily, he was dealing with their absolute surrender to him. You know, and they had a saying, when the last piece is laid upon the altar, that the fire would fall. And this was an allusion alluding to the, the altar that Elijah built on Mount Carmel. And when the last piece was placed upon the altar, the fire fell. And so that's recorded in 1 Kings 18. And many in the holiness movements experienced the baptism of fire. They called it an experience of sanctification. But it was very powerful and it was very life-changing. And so it was that this so-called baptism of fire brought about an experience in their lives called sanctification. And this experience dealt with the nature of sin in their lives. The fire purged them, doing a great deep work within them and preparing a place for the Holy Spirit to dwell. Now, in the late 60s and the early 70s, another move of the Spirit came, which we call the charismatic move. And uh, it was a great move of God. And many, many people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit across all denominations. But there was one element missing. Again, and that was a fire. There was no baptism of fire. And again, that resulted in much carnality and, and mixture. You know, during those years, the word sanctification was very rarely heard. And um, the lack of fire did not deal with the demonic problems. And so there were problems through that move of God. Great, right, we've now come full circle. See, the two experiences, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire in this generation needs to become one experience, a powerful, life-changing experience. And so it's really important to understand this. On the 1st of July, I had an interactive vision uh, with the Lord, and I got up early one morning, sat down to pray, when suddenly I was in another realm, the realm of spirit. And I was watching the Lord picking up sticks. Now, it was very unusual. He was picking up sticks of wood and placing them in small piles. And um, the Lord then looked at me and said, will you help me? And so I said, yes, I'll help you. And so I started picking up sticks and putting them into little piles. Then the Lord looked at all of these piles of sticks that he collected. And he blew upon each pile. As he did, they burst into flames. At that point, the scene changed. And I was high above America, just like you'd have a satellite view. I was high above America. And um, as I looked down, I saw fires starting all over the country. Fires were everywhere. Many of these fires joined together and became much bigger. 
one thing stood out, and that was there was no evidence of smoke anywhere. I thought that was strange. There was just no smoke. I then began to see other nations with similar thing happening. Suddenly, I was again down where the fires were burning, and I turned to the Lord and I said, Lord, what is this? What is happening? And uh, while I was at this level again, the earthly level, I could see plainly many people in the fires just praising God. They were just praising God. Then these people began to emerge from the fire, and they were glowing. Their skin was smooth, like, almost like glass smooth there was not a wrinkle anywhere and they looked kind of molten and glowed with, with red tinges and blue tinges and red hues i said to the lord what is this He's, the lord looked at me and he said you are seeing what i am about to do next in my church i thought about this you know for a long time he said emphatically i will do it then I saw these people beginning to go forth across the earth. They were healing the sick. Power was flowing through them unhindered. They were casting out demons, healing people. And I marveled at the authority that they had. Their words instantly manifested that which they spoke. It was that instant and the authority was that powerful. When the Lord looked at me again, he spoke, he said, Tell the people they must give themselves to me. You will not be changed unless in humility and sincerity you come to me and ask me to do it. At that point, the scene changed again. And I was in heaven looking at these awesome creatures. They seemed very fierce, uh, yet very benign. Uh, but very fierce, nevertheless, they stood before the throne of God and around the throne of God. There was a sound coming off them that sounded like a blowtorch. They were awesome, indescribable creatures. And the Lord said to me, Come, my people, the seraphims are coming. And he said, Just one in the midst of a church will start a revival. He said, They will burn the darkness of sin out of my people, and the results of sin will be purged from them. I'm going to baptize them, not just with the Holy Spirit, but with fire. And then the world will see them burn with my love, my justice, and my power. You know, the prophet Isaiah experienced something similar to this. Remember Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6. Verse 5, he lived in a time which was similar to ours. He said, I lived in a time where the people are unclean, they have unclean lips. And he said, woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell among the people who are the same. For my eyes have seen the King, uh, the Lord of hosts. And the Bible says a seraphim came and flew, took a coal off the altar and touched his lips. And purged him. And iniquity is taken away, thy sin is purged. It's not just forgiveness, but there was a purging of sin. You know, the Hebrew word seraph means burning. And, uh, and so these awesome creatures are going to be released into the church. And they're going to bring and release the baptism of fire into the church and those who are hungry for God. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me, uh, whose shoes are not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fan is in his hand, he will thoroughly purge his floor, gather the wheat into garners, and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So we're coming into that time period now. And I believe, you know, when the Water baptism is taught in a way of absolute surrender to God, surrendering of our lives, surrender to God. When people are baptized and then come out of the water and baptized in the Holy Spirit, God is going to add the other dimension, that of fire. And there'll be an absolute and a total transformation. Well, there's coming a baptism of fire that will be a part of what God is about to do. But we need to prepare our hearts. For the seraphims are coming. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 4. When the Lord hath washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and hath purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst by the spirit of judgment, and by the spirit
fine. It deals with the consequences of sin in our life, the pollution that sin has left in our life. It deals with the demonic. So we are now coming into that period, and we need to prepare our hearts for that. It requires an absolute surrender of our lives, the seeking God, the laying down of our lives at a new level, and asking Him to bring the fire. Those of you who have been already baptized in the Holy Spirit now need to seek God for the baptism of fire to be added to that. And so there will come an absolute purging and cleansing where we will be set free to search, serve the Lord in purity of heart, with real authority, and walk this earth as Jesus walked this earth. God bless you. I hope this is helpful to you today. The Lord bless you. Subscribe to the channel and keep learning, sons and daughters of God, the elect, we are remnant. Let's become strong towers. Let's keep learning. We're in the end times of the last days. There's going to be a lot of events happening. We want to be ready. God bless you guys forever and ever in Jesus' name.